Well, joining us now from Adelaide is the Greens spokesperson on immigration and citizenship, Senator Sarah Hanson Young. Thanks for being there. Okay, do you agree with the Minister that these riots are the result of increased rejection rates of asylum seekers? In other words, the results of a tougher asylum policy? I think the uh, riots that we've seen and the increase of tension and frustration, not just in Villawood but across all of the detention facilities, are of a result of uh, long-term detention, uh, a lack of information to those in detention, confusion about the process, a lack of clarity. Uh, and, of course, the, the overcrowding in certain areas and the shunting from one detention centre to the next. Of course, uh, the government on this one, and I, I saw uh, the Minister's uh, interview on uh, the 7.30 uh, program this afternoon or this evening, where he, again, has his head buried in the sand on this. There is a crisis going on in the immigration detention facilities. It is at breaking point everywhere you look and uh, the only way the only way to get out of this is to review the entire process and to start realizing that without t uh, limits on detention without moving people through the process being clear about that these tensions are simply going to continue to rise all right we'll come to that in more detail in a moment first we've just heard uh, claims from a former guard uh, that circo the private corporation uh, running the detention that has been throwing raw recruits in at the deep end at Villawood Detention Centre without proper training. How serious a breach would that be? Look, I think that's very serious and uh, unfortunately uh, it's those types of reports that we've been hearing on the ground for some time now, not just in Villawood but in other facilities. Uh, questions over the uh, adequate training of, of those who have to work with children, uh, adequate training for those uh, on the ground every day having to, to, to work with uh, asylum seekers who are, are clearly suffering severe mental health uh, concerns, suffering torture and trauma from the persecution and torture they've, they've suffered. Now, it's, I, I really feel for the Serco security officers on this one. They are at the cold face in a very, very difficult situation. And uh, the, the Serco officers that I talk to when I visit detention centres, uh, I've never been anywhere where I haven't had an officer come up to me and say, hang on, Senator, let me tell you the real story. And that is a concern. Well, it's about yeah. time the government reviewed the contract, had an urgent audit of uh, the types of operations that are going on and realise that the promise that they broke in 2007 to uh, bring back into public hands the running of detention centres. When they broke that promise, they made a mistake. So uh, the Greens strongly believe, do they, that the detention centres should be re-nationalised in effect? Well, at the, last, uh, at the uh, 2007 election, the uh, Labor Party said uh, because of the situation that we'd seen happen for uh, the, the decade or half before, before them, uh, the situation of, of rioting across the different detention centres, including on Nauru under the Howard government, uh, the Labor Party said, yes, I think it's about time we started to have more transparency in the process. Of course, Labor got into power, they won government, and we've never seen uh, that promise acted upon. But why, I can I just get us to interrupt you there? Why, would, uh, why do you believe public servants would do any better than Serco? I think it's about the transparency. Since the contract was signed with Serco uh, some uh, two and a half years ago, uh, people, as myself in, in Senate estimates, advocates have been asking to see the contract. Let's see what the service provision requirements are. When uh, the government talks about possible breaches, let's have a look at what those possible breaches are. There's no set auditing, there's no regular audit auditing, and because no one knows what the service contract is, because it's in, in, in confidence, commercial in confidence, there's nothing to judge that on. And I think that really does raise questions about how uh, these facilities are being run at taxpayers' money. And then when tensions rise like this, uh, who, who is to blame? Well, at the moment, only the government can take the blame. Uh, but we really need to get down to, to, to the issues of seeing what is going, going on on the ground. OK. Uh, Chris Bowen says he's got virtually now two in inquiries underway with the same team doing the inquiry, of course. The Christmas Island riots, now this one, looking into the circumstances of the riots and the preparedness uh, of Serco to actually mm. deal with these things. I mean, should he wait uh, before acting, wait for the results of these inquiries? 
Well, look, first and foremost, I think we really need to, to, to make it very clear that uh, uh, we all condemn uh, the violence, we all condemn the, the property damage of, of the riots, and I don't think anyone <laughs> can argue that, that the rioting has, has made the situation any better in, in either of the facilities and for, for anybody there, particularly those directly involved. I don't think it's, it's made their cases any better. Uh, but why this has occurred is what should be being investigated. The complex uh, reason behind the, the rise of the tensions and really trying to move forward to, to a solution. If the government only wants to look at individual case by individual case, they will fail to address it. There is a systematic problem in the immigration detention network. Right. It all needs to be reviewed. Let's ask what the Greens are prepared to do then because you're in a unique position. I mean, you're in an alliance with the Labor government and they require your votes in the Senate to get key legislation through. I mean, are you prepared to use that leverage to force changes in the immigration system? Well, I think, I think the government has two options. They can either take the, uh, the Tony Abbott line, which is uh, simply stop the votes. Tony Abbott is in some fairyland world where he thinks life is so simple that if you say that uh, magic will happen and, and the problem will go away. Well, that's clearly not the case. He likes to trivialise this. Yes, but I, I'm, uh, I'm going to interrupt you there because I'm asking issue. now specifically what the Greens are prepared to do. I mean, for example, you want essentially to end a mandatory detention. Are you prepared to use your political leverage to force the government to do that? Well, as I was saying, I think the government has two choices. They either buy into the fairyland uh, tale of Tony Abbott or they look at the harsh realities that this system needs to be over uh, overturned. We need time limits on detention. We need judicial review so the system is fair and is very clear. And uh, we need to ensure that children, first and foremost, are not caught up in the system. The three clear things that the government needs to do, and I'm not saying they're easy, but they do need to happen. I currently have uh, two uh, private members' bills before the parliament ready to be debated, and uh, if, if, uh, if Chris Bowen and the government want to actually take some action to fix this, let's sit around the table and let's talk about it. Otherwise, uh, they will continue to get drawn into uh, the dreamland world of Stop the Boats. But and no, no, I'll ask you for a third slogans. time, are the Greens prepared to use their political leverage to force the government continue, into action. I will continue to, to, to say to the government, this is the way forward, this is how we can fix it, and at every turn, at every opportunity, I will, I will put forward the solutions. I, I really think but that, that, but that's, the, but that's the public a, that's, is sick that and is, tired. That is simply rhetoric. The question is, are you prepared to use your political power, your leverage, the Greens, to force the government to do something? Well, Tony, I think we are using our political leverage because we are the only ones out there saying this is the solution. And if we are going to have a long-term solution that is humane and that is practical, well, the government needs to get on board. I'm more than happy. My door is always open. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's get it done. But you're, not, not, prepared, you're not prepared to link this to other issues vital to the government's mandate? Well, I, th I, think it's, I think it's already linked to the government's credibility on a raft of things. When you have the minister in a, in a serious interview tonight, after all of the events of the last 24 hours, all of the issues going on in immigration detention in the last few months, to sit there and pretend that somehow uh, this isn't a big problem and there isn't a crisis, uh, this, is clearly, this is clearly a problem for the government and uh, it's time that we started to, to work it out. Sarah Hanson-Young, I don't think we finally did get an answer to that uh, question asked, I think, on four occasions, but uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony.